Good morning. Happy New Year. 2015 coming up. Wow. Who knew? Dream boards, January 1st. Yeah. Do you want me to talk about that now? Yeah, sure. I think Jan's got her dream board. She brought it in too for people to look yeah. at. Some more? Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so on January 1st, Thursday, from 11 to 3, we're going to be here at the church doing the dream boards again. We have about 28 boards that are blank that people can use. Um, we have a lot of magazines, um, I think some old calendars for pictures and, and words and things like that. Bring your own supplies though if you have them like scissors and glue and, and markers, whatever you want because I know we are very limited on that. So if you have those supplies, bring them with you. So we're going to be here. Also bring finger foods, snacks, so you have something to munch on. I think we might have some um, drinks and stuff still back in the refrigerator, some cookies that we can add to the bunch if they didn't get eaten. Uh, pardon me? Thursday the 1st, 11 to 3. New Year's Day. New Year's Day, yes. Also, Lynn is trying to put together a recipe book for the church. Do you guys hear me back there okay? Okay. Lynn is putting together a recipe book and we need recipes desperately. We have a few that have been donated. This is back on the table as you come through the door or as you leave. So we would really appreciate it if you guys would like to start adding your favorite recipes to the box so that she can kind of start getting this put together. We have several that have been donated or, or put in here already. Um, I know I put in a couple. Peggy has uh, put in some. Uh, there's that flaxseed bread, gluten-free, sugar-free that um, Sandra put in. Also the uh, recipe for the chili that she had. So there's a lot of recipes that have already been given, but we need much more to make a really super cool book. So if you could, please remember, you could email them to her, I'm sure, as easily as putting them in the box. So um, get her email address if you need it. Um, and I think that was it. Thank cool. you. Anything for like rum brownies or rum cookies, yet, rum cake? <laughs> there's, a, there's a theme here somewhere, but I'm... Mm -hmm. Let me just give them my email address. Okay. Okay, if you've got paper and a pen, you can write my email address down. Is everybody ready? <laughs> I know, right? Okay, it's Frisky Nana. <laughs> Frisky Nana. Uh, oh, sure. Is that a Y or IE? Y. At charter.net. And you can send your recipes to me. Thank you. Yeah, that would be fun. Oh, it's up to 58? Cool. Wow. Cool. Hi, YouTube. We do have a couple of patron saints by the name of George Carlin and John Lennon. And if this is a song, I don't recognize this, so maybe somebody will recognize this, but this was John. There are places I'll remember all my life, though some have changed, some forever, not for better. Some have gone and some remain. All these places had their moments with lovers and friends. I still can recall some are dead and some are living in my life. I've loved them all. Anybody recognize that as a song? Okay, which one? Probably one by John, huh? Okay. And George, Don Ho can sign his autograph 3.4 times faster than Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. <laughs> There's a piece of information that you'll never forget. Hey, we had a church uh, candy in, in the paper today. Oh no, it was fudge. Okay. Uh, Brian, uh, Mike and Mary's uh, kitty cat, one of their kitty cats, Fudge, was in the paper today. So. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> According to the U.S. Transportation uh, Security Administration, and this was 10 years ago, in 2003, passengers left 
$303,970 in loose change at airport metal detectors. The U.S. Treasury Department appropriates the money and returns it to circulation. So maybe if you just kind of stood by some of the major airports, you could make a living. Yeah. Wow. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Okay. Um, was that? Nick time. Which one was I doing? Oh, well. An alley was originally a walkway, but later the meaning came to include narrow passages, such as those between houses and cities. When baseball became popular, alley came to stand for imaginary lines running between outfields. A ball hit straight down the alley would usually mean extra bases. Some baseball sluggers liked to brag that they had alleys belonging to them. When these sluggers got an easy hit, it was said to be down their alley. From the baseball field, this expression came to mean any task specifically suited to one's talents. I've done that one, haven't I? Okay, so, and I did that one, so that means that this is the one that I was supposed to do today. So, I just looked at this 45 minutes ago. I should remember, but, yeah. In the history of sports, no other game has ever approached the quickness with which baseball, this sounds much better to me, uh, the, uh, which baseball rose to popularity in June 1864. The first match, uh, game, match game ever played took place in Hoboken, New Jersey. Enthusiasts of the new sport discovered that the pitcher played a very important part. Soon, pitchers learned they could fool batters by spinning the ball. After throwing an effective curve, skill, skillful pitchers were said by their admirers to have something on the ball. The expression came to mean effectiveness in general. Collier's, uh, it goes on and on about where it went to from there, but that was kind of interesting. On the ball. So, you on the ball today, Christopher? Sure. Okay, okay. <laughs> Unanswered prayer. Where is it, this one? Preacher's notice or father. Okay, I didn't do that one. A rabbi said to be a precocious, said to a precocious six-year-old boy, so, your mother says your prayers for you each night. Well, that's very commendable. What does she say? Well, the little boy quickly replied, Thank God he's in bed. <laughs> yeah, you never, you know, parents and then grandkids. You know, grandkids are so completely different than regular kids. I mean, they're just like, they can do anything, cry, oh, it's okay, give them candy, you know. And, oh, you're having a bad day, doesn't matter. Here, roll them in dirt, let them play in the water, and then give them back. So. <laughs> A secret may be sometimes best kept by keeping the secret of its being a secret. A secret may be sometimes best kept by keeping the secret of its being a secret. <laughs> nobody will keep the things he hears to himself and nobody will repeat just what he has heard and no more. <laughs> Lucius Seneca, 65 AD, born in 4, 4 BC. Imagine that. Uh, I have, how do they get these quotes from all these people that are so old? I don't, somebody has a good memory. Yeah, when you have nothing to say, say nothing. It's still there. Any good New Year's parties I should know about? No? Wow. Dream boards. Life is too short to be serious all the time. So if you can't laugh at yourself, just call me and I'll laugh at you. <laughs> The secret, the secret to happiness is to have a good sense of humor and a bad memory. They're not gray hairs. They're my wisdom highlights. I just happen to be extremely wise. Uh -oh. <laughs> Hello. Is this, uh, is this here the Arkansas Sheriff's Office? Yes. What can I do for you? I'm calling to report my neighbor, Virgil Smith. He's drilling holes in his firewood and hiding marijuana inside. <laughs> Thank you very much for the call, sir. The next day, the sheriffs and his deputies descend on Virgil's house. They search the shed where the firewood is kept. Using axes, they split every piece of wood but find no <laughs> marijuana. They sneer at Virgil and leave. The phone rings at Virgil's house. Hey, Virgil, this is Floyd. Did the sheriff come? Yeah. Did they split your firewood? Yep. Happy birthday, buddy.
You know what they do now in the state of Washington? You get a call for like that? Oh, we'll see you in the morning, maybe. <laughs> they don't care. <coughs> don't think. I don't know. There. Did you ever get that thing working, hon? I don't know what document. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, take me a minute on the computer. I wish I was that age and knew what I know now. <laughs> Have a whole life to go through and really try to mess it up, so. We have a special guest today, and we are always so happy to see him here, and I know he's happy to be seen, so. <laughs> Christopher, we love you, thank you. Thank you. It is nice to be seen, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know what the reverse of that would be. Not seen? Hmm. Living in the shadow? Maybe. I don't know. Ah. So did everybody have a great Christmas? Yes. Did you all get what you wanted? Yes. Be honest. Yes. <laughs> it was interesting for me because my family kept asking me, what do you want, Dad? What do you want? I said, I don't want anything. I have everything I need. Don't need anything anymore. And I stuck to it. They're pretty good at, you know, prying something out of me. Uh, but I actually stuck to saying I didn't really want anything this Christmas. Of course, I got stuff. <laughs> Socks, you know, slippers, that kind of thing. Uh, but it was really nice to realize within myself that I truly, really had everything that I needed. And what was important to me was my family, my friends, my church family. Uh, the thing, those things that really mean something in my life. I have lots of that, and my, my cup overfloweth with that. So the material things that typically go with Christmas, I had no interest in uh, at all this year. And it was really nice to, when you, you, you know when you're going through something and, and you do this thing, I like to call it introspection, you stop, boom. wow. And you examine the thought you just had. And then you go, that's a pretty cool thought. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I really didn't want anything. And it was so beautiful to realize that within myself. Because, I don't know, I think our culture is set up so, oh gee, get this and get that. And this is new and, and all of that stuff. Yeah, so anyway, it, that's how Christmas went. And it was really beautiful in my family. We do this thing with stockings. So everybody comes over Christmas morning uh, we do a little breakfast thing, and then along the fireplace, there's all of these stockings. Stocking for me, stocking for Nancy, stocking for the grandkids, stocking for my daughters and their husbands. So I'll, I'll crust the whole thing. It's full of stockings. Nancy's mom uh, and dad came down from Yakima, and my um, son-in-law's father came by. So everybody had a stocking. <laughs> it was kind of fun. And then we let the grandkids go and get the stockings and give them to people. And, and it's just kind of little stuff in there, but it was fun. It was really nice. It was really beautiful. That, for me, was my Christmas gift, to be surrounded by all those wonderful, beautiful people. Being here this morning is another Christmas gift for me. And, before I go any farther, <coughs> go Seahawks! <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's important! I, let's, we should all practice manifestation, and we're going to manifest a winning game today for the Seahawks. <laughs> all right, that would be, now, I want that. <laughs> I do want that. I think a lot of people do, too. So what I want to talk to you today, uh, really, is about just kind of, kind of normal, little, everyday things that we kind of take for granted and we don't really think much about them and we just go along our way and we keep doing whatever it is that we're doing. But yet every single thought you have, every single thing you do is significant. It's significant. 
There is not a single thing that you say to a person that you meet that is not significant to them or to you, even though you might be doing it just in passing. It's important to take the time and be aware of the connection that you're making with the people that are around you. Because it's huge. It's huge. We, a lot of times, what traffic is a good one. Somebody cuts you off and you want to, you don't flip fingers because you never know who's carrying a gun. <laughs> but sometimes you, you, you get that kind of little bit of <clears throat> irritation, you know. Think about that. What's, what's going on when that happens? Really, what's really happening when that happens? Why, you know, maybe that person was in a really hurry because of something in their life. Who knows? But don't let that kind of stuff affect you. But really what I want to get to is the everyday, hi, how are you, passing that we have with the people that we interact with constantly. All right? And the biggest, the, that biggest group of people are, is going to be your family, and it's going to be wherever your work setting is, the people that you work with on a daily basis. Okay, How are you interacting with them? Are you feeling good about the interactions that you're having with them? Or do you walk away from some of those inter interactions and going not feeling so hot about it? Somebody says something to you at work and it just strikes you wrong. How are you dealing with that? Where's your awareness when that happens? Because you see, we're spiritual people. We're, we're beings of light. We're, we're stardust. Every single one of us is. So how can, how can we not see that in another person when we interact with them? It's so important to have that awareness. Just to be aware that what you're, when you interact with a person, it doesn't matter what they look like on the outside or what clothes they're wearing or any of those things. You're talking to another part of yourself. You're talking to a being of light. You're interacting with a part of God as you are yourself. We forget that. Sometimes it's hard for us to say that, but it's true. It's really true. There's... Um, I guess I'm an um, optimist. <laughs> I'm always looking on the bright side of things. And I found this really, really cute story about that. And I want to share that with you because I think it's significant. So, let's see. This is, I love the title of this story. It's called, This is Good. It's an old story, and it's told of a king in Africa who had a close friend with whom he grew up. And the friend had a habit of looking at every situation that occurred in his life, positive or negative, and remarking, this is good. So it didn't matter what happened in his life. If it was a negative thing that happened in his life, or if it was a positive thing that happened in his life, his comment was, this is good. There's another story about this where the guy has some horses and they run off and, and he says, well, we'll see, you know, that kind of thing. This is better. I like this story. Let me continue. One day, the king and his friends were out on a hunting expedition. And the friend would load and prepare the gun for the king. And the friend had apparently done something wrong in preparing one of the guns. For after taking the gun from his friend, the king fired it, and his thumb was blown off. <laughs> Examining the situation, the friend remarked, as usual, This is good. <laughs> to which the king replied, No! This is not good! This is not good! And he proceeded to put his friend in jail. This is a king, he could do that. <laughs> so his friend's in jail. Because this king said, nah, you know, I just lost my thumb. This is not good. It gets better. About a year later. Now, this whole year, his friend's been in jail. Okay? And he's probably going every day, oh, this is good. <laughs> There's a message here. Okay? <laughs> About a year later, the king was hunting in an area that he 
knew better to stay clear of. Cannibals captured him. And they took him to their village. They tied his hands, they stacked some wood, they set up a stake, and they bound him to the stake. As they were near getting ready to set fire to the wood, they noticed that the kings had a missing thumb. Being superstitious, they never ate anyone that was less than whole. Now cannibals, okay, they wouldn't eat anybody that was less than whole. They had it together. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> so untying the king, they sent him on his way. Okay. They missed out on a kingly feast, no pun intended. <laughs> As he returned home, he was reminded of the event that had taken his thumb and felt remorse for the treatment of his friend. So he went to the jail immediately to speak with his friend. He says, you were right. He said, it was good that my thumb was blown off. And he proceeded to tell his friend all about what had just happened. And I am so, so very sorry for sending you to jail for so long. It was bad of me to do that. No, his friend replied, this is good. And then the king goes, what do you mean this is good? How could it be good? I sent my friend to jail for a year. And his friend said, if I had not been in jail, I would have been with you. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> so, when we get back to the little incidents that happen daily in our lives, how are we reacting to those things? Are they good? Are they positive or negative? How do you react to them? You know, I was at a meeting the other day. I was talking to Peggy about it just before church services. And we're a group, it's called Mystic Party Solutions. And what they're going to do is bring a masquerade ball to the Tri-Cities. I'd been to one over in Seattle. It was really a hoot. It was a lot of fun. And you had to have a mask or you can't be in there, that kind of thing. Um, and it just, it's just really fun. So they wanted to bring that same atmosphere here and they wanted to help a nonprofit with the proceeds. So I've been working with them. And when I went with them last year, when we first started talking about it, I said, you know, it takes about two years to put an event together if you really want to do it right. So they took my advice. They got a two-year timetable. And they're, they're really moving along. And we meet generally once a month. So I was at the meeting yesterday. And one of them hadn't seen me for, oh, I guess about two months. Because my health, is, it kind of goes up and down. And he goes, how are you doing? I says, oh, you know, I'm doing okay. And it was interesting. As we were talking, he came to the realization that he thought I had been completely healed. And I'm going, well, that's okay. I like that thought. <laughs> but he didn't know. He couldn't tell just by the way I was acting and by the way I look. Um, spiritually, mentally, awareness-wise, I'm in great health. My body's not doing so well. But I am. <laughs> and that's what I'm projecting. And that's what I project to people. And, and it's interesting that I got that comment from him because he had no idea that I still had stuff going on. So it's interesting how we interact with each other. And I loved it when we went through the meeting. There, you, when this event happens, it's going to be in August, the uh, later part of August, and it'll be here in Richland at, um, I think, the... Um, Country gentlemen have a new place over here. We're going to do it over there. And we're going to have some entertainment from some of the performing arts folks. And the, um, I think the master singers are going to do some stuff there too. And it's going to be really good. So I'll keep you posted on what's going on with it. Because you're going to want to go to this. <laughs> <coughs> Did you? Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Because they were saying, yeah, we got the gal that's going to do uh, tarot readings um, blind basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's my group. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so here we are. 
okay, we're, we just did Christmas. We had this wonderful, and how wonderful did it feel giving something to someone? Doesn't, doesn't that feel good? I really love giving, oh, way so much more than I ever did receiving something. Giving something that just really, really, ah, oh, feels so good. Christmas is past, but New Year's is coming. A new year. What are you going to do with that new year? And a lot of people, you know, they'll do New Year's re resolutions, and I'm going to lose 20 pounds, or I'm going to, you know, run, I'm going to do exercise at least uh, maybe once a week, being honest. <laughs> You know, whatever it is. But if you're going to do something, make your mind up, have the right awareness for it, and stick to it. And if you say you're going to do something and you can't stick to it, promise me this. Do not beat yourself up for it. Okay? Don't beat yourself up for it. If you say you're going to lose 20 pounds and you'll lose 10, celebrate that. You say you're going to do a, start an exercise program and you're going to run every other day and, and you miss a couple of weeks, but you still, you're doing more than you were doing before, celebrate that. If you say you're going to do something and you don't even start it, that's okay. Celebrate it. It means you weren't ready to do it yet. Don't beat yourself up. We have a tendency to really put ourselves down more than anybody we know. <laughs> And we have some people probably in our lives that are pretty good at putting a thumb on us. But I'll tell you what, we're better at it. We do it better than anybody. And if I can leave you with anything this morning, start the new year by appreciating you and celebrating who you are. Celebrating what you bring to the rest of us. Because you do bring something to the rest of us. Nobody else can bring what you bring. And that needs to be celebrated. You're beautiful, light, energy beings. And we're really all one. So don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. Namaste. This is good. <laughs> this is good. Is this better? Yes. <laughs> okay. Communion is a physical manifestation of the energy we're already sharing. So allow this token, this emblem, this symbol, to feed your soul and to acknowledge to yourself that you're not alone spiritually. Not only are there like-minded people here that love you and care for you, but you're also connected to a div divine source that loves you and delights in you. And with that, would you join me in prayer, please? Loving Spirit of Light, as we partake of this, help us to remember our sacredness. Help us to step into our sacredness. Help us to share our sacredness. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. As that continues around, join us in prayer again, please. Loving Spirit of Light, as we drink this in, 
Help us to drink in life. Help us to drink it all in, all of it, and know that it is good. In the name of Jesus. Is that a request? Okay. Volunteer. I didn't know if you had to go to the restroom. Or you did that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Throughout the service, I've been getting a download from Creator having to do with this. And thank you, Phil, for allowing it. I have a prayer this morning for us. It is a prayer of blessing for those who can give and those who can't. It's a prayer, prayer of blessing for those who have and those who have not. It's a prayer for those who understand and those who do not. In all of these ways, abundance is present. This is but one. So whether you're blessed or need blessing, whether you have or have not, whether you need or don't, I would offer this prayer that you share as you can. Thank you, sir. Next Sunday... Uh, Dan's going to lead us again in that medicine wheel process. So remember how much we enjoyed that. Next Sunday. Next Thursday. New Year. Isn't next Sunday the... Thursday. Thursday. New Year's Day. Yes. yes. <laughs> New Year's Day. I'll have to sit back up here again. Back here, yes. Don't mind me. My brain is just not... Don't, <coughs> Don't go yeah. very far. Um, I wanted to share with you our dream board because it was both of ours it was both of ours and half the time when you do a dream board what you think you're doing isn't what really gets manifested in the year <laughs> so I want to share that with you um, I put hearts I have a, cu a teacup that has a heart in it and then this heart here um, it's actually a leaf with light shining behind it and my intent was to live for my heart. And right below that is healthy, being healthy. And I was having some health issues and not feeling my best. Well, come to find out. <laughs> I've been having, I had to do a heart monitor and some other things going on. My blood pressure is really low, so they're still trying to figure out what's going on with that. So I had no idea, but there it is, two places, three places. Um, the, the mentor, the facilitating, facilitating change. I didn't really put a whole lot into that. The, there's other leadership and teaching. And, you know, I do a lot of mentoring, that sort of thing. Well, this year I did um, a mediumship group, mediumship class, teaching people how to do that, and channeling. And then when we finished that class, then we all of a sudden opened that up so that the people who participated in that class then could share what they had. And I'm a facilitator of that. Who knew? Didn't know that. Um, and this picture of the angels, I just thought, well, it would be really nice to you know, connect with the angel a little bit better. And over the last few weeks, I've been doing all these messages about angels. And they've been making their presence really, really clear, really, really known. So who knew? Who knew about that? Mr. Phil, you want to share your little bit down there? Sure. I did um, spirituality and health and I had all electric and green and solar stuff and things. And once we do this in January, we put it away. 
Well, I it mean, hangs on the wall, but yeah, we don't but really... Yeah, but we don't really... I don't look at it until a few months later and go, huh, I should put up solar panels on the house. You oh, should buy a new car. You're I'm, I'm working on another electric car. Yeah, so Those weren't are. the plans at the beginning of the year. So the only thing that we haven't accomplished... Had a lot of time to reflect. Here's my little frog who's reflecting over here. Um, got a bunch of people who are taking the... Took a little trip. Took a little trip. Yes, we did. Uh, working on publishing another book and helping other people publish. So that's Kid really cool. Kitty and dog. Oh, kitty and dog. Well, here's another story. So I had wanted like a two or three year old female cat. <laughs> I got a three week old kitten, little boy kitten, um, who is very spiritually connected, I have to tell you. If you don't know the story about his name, I'll have to tell you that one. Um, but he was a, he's a character. Um, the picture shows a dog and the cat and they're laying together. Um, this cat that hasn't quite happened yet. Hasn't quite happened yet. They play. But the cat has figured out that he's king of the world. He has catitude. And he has discovered that if he goes, Choo! the dog will run outside. <laughs> so in the middle of the night, he gets up and I'm sleeping on my side. He'll get on my shoulder and look down at the dog and go, Choo! out the dog goes. <laughs> dog comes in, cat sits up, Choo! out the dog goes again. So. So it hasn't manifested quite the way I had wanted it to. So all of that, the man, your dream board is where you speak your heart's truth. And it opens an opportunity for spirit to work in your life. If you're working your dream board, trying to make it happen, you're wrenching life. And you're not allowing that divine manifestation to take place. They work together. They work together. I wanted to live in my heart. And the universe said, okay, let's take a look at your heart, shall we? I want people to hear my heart. Let's put on a heart monitor, shall we? So it it's, it's, doesn't always look the way you think it's going to look, but it looks the way it's meant to be. And it's hard, it's hard to do, and it's hard to make it and let it go, and then come back to it and go, oh, look, there it is. Oh, look, there it is. Oh, look, I did that in a whole different way than you ever thought you could. Make sense? So, dream boards. Take a few minutes between now and New Year's. What would I like to manifest in my life? What does your heart want now? What does your head want? Oh, my head wants a new car. Well, when you get into that want, we manifest and create for ourselves a recurring need. But if we can be in a place, wouldn't it be wonderful if I could be, do, or have something. Remember, money is energetically void. You can write a million dollars on here a million times, and unless you come up with a million dollar idea and have a million dollar worth of energy to apply to it, it probably won't work for you. It could. Are you willing to go through 999,000 really bad ideas first? That's what it takes. Are you willing to put into it what it takes? And it may not look like what you think it looks like. So the reason we use pictures is because pictures and words that are graphic go past the judgment part of your brain straight in to your subconscious. So using pictures talks to your subconscious and then your subconscious manifests what your heart would want you to have when it's in harmony with divine spirit. When we're in harmony, our heart, our awareness, our consciousness, our subconscious is in harmony with spirit, there's no stopping us. It just may not look like what we think it's going to look like. Do you have anything to add to that, Mr. Phil? Amen. Got a little passion on that.